Good evening and welcome to our parent night. We are so excited that um, you guys made uh, time for us to come out and hear about the guidance program at Bartram Trail High School. I am one of the ninth and 10th grade school counselors. My name is Miss Graham and I serve grades 9th and 10th, surnames A through G. This is Miss Favreau. She is also 9th and 10th and her caseload is P through Z. The other counselors are in different sections of this um, parent night tonight. Over in the corner we have one of our administrators, Mr. Matt Hodges. His office is in the portables and so he assists the guidance program tremendously. And we will start off with Ms. Faber and her presentation tonight. Yeah. Uh, so we have a lot of information to give you, High School 101. There are a million things we could talk about, um, but we're going to give you um, kind of the basics of graduation requirements, how to contact who, who to contact when, um, Bright Futures and things like that. Um, if you have additional questions that we do not cover, please write them down on the papers at your table and put them in the basket at the end. We will be posting a QA and a um, if we don't have time to answer your questions at the end. We'll be posting that on the website with this presentation so that we can get all questions answered. Okay? Um, so this is the guidance department, like Ms. Graham already said. <laughs> your ninth and 10th grade counselors, Ms. Graham, Ms. LeBaron, and myself. And then 11th and 12th grade, we have Ms. Sterling, Ms. Mosley, and Ms. Patterson. Um, we offer uh, open door policy at lunch to all of our students. So for second, third lunch, our doors are open. And that's the time that students can come in with any questions. I have, I had a bunch of kids come today about like dual enrollment or, or um, you know, come ask me about trade school, college. So it's a great time for them to take advantage of things like that. And um, on your sheet, we have a stay in the loop. So we have like a texting program. We send reminders all the time. Um, we have our guidance website, it's all on there. And we have our Instagram as of this year, it's new. Um, so the link will be at the end of this that you can scan and follow us too. Um, just good ways to stay in touch and we kind of like to post what uh, is happening on campus, scholarship information, and things like that. So lots of things are happening at this large high school. Just want to bring some of these items out to you, college visits. So even though you have a ninth and 10th grader, it doesn't mean that they cannot hear about the colleges. And I know with this pandemic year, it's been a blessing for us because instead of us having to, or parents having to transport their child to the college to meet a college rep, we have them come into our schools and during the lunchtime and they sit out in the courtyard and they pass out information to our students. We encourage the ninth and 10th graders to listen in to ask questions, to see what they're looking for in terms of their application. So that's happening. And so far, you can see the colleges that have visited us. We have First Coast Technical. We have the University of Alabama, University of Florida, LSU. We have had um, UF. They have all been here. We have, we have also um, hosted a college fair to help them. And we set up tables in the courtyard every month for 9th and 10th. That's our way of going out and connecting with the students. So not only do they, can, can they come in during fourth period lunch to meet with us, because some of them do not want to miss their classes or miss a quiz. So we have an open door policy where they can come with their lunch and come and meet with us and talk with us about any issues that they may have. So these, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with our Bartram Trail website, but we also have a counseling website. Um, for 9th and 10th grade in, in September, all of the concerts went in through the English classes and we talked to the 9th graders about GPA, graduation requirements, what they need to know. In the month of October, we went into the 10th grade classes and we talked about the second year of high school, what to expect, um, how to prepare now for college admissions tests. Just last week, we went through the world history classes and we presented on uh, college and careers, and they all took a career interest inventory. We had about 900 students that took that test. And we, we are trying to let them start thinking about careers, making sure they have an idea of what they want to do. Even though they don't know exactly what they want to do, we're just trying to prepare them so that they are thinking about it. All of those lessons and presentations can be found on our website. So if you want to log on tonight or maybe this week, Log on and see what we have discussed with them. 
There is information about ACT, Community Service, scholarships, all of the information in this packet you can find on our Bartram Trail website. I'm sure all of you are familiar with our HACC, which is our Home Access Center. You can check their grades daily. Um, sometimes teachers may be a little late posting, especially for English. You know that they are grading essays. Most teachers in English have 180 essays to grade, so maybe if a child said they were working on an essay and they turned it in, that grade may not be posted right away. And sometimes that grade drops, and then you know parents are panicking, like why all of a sudden it was an A on Monday and now it's an F? Because when that teacher posts the assignment in there, Sometimes it automatically affects the grade and they have not updated it. So don't panic. Math and science grade because they are like multiple choice and they can go through the scan drawings. Teachers can post those right away. So you can find out their attendance if they have been skipping, if they were tardy to class three or four times. That gives you a daily update. So you can check that like the stock market. <laughs> Even the discipline reports are there as well. So if your child receive a discipline referral, that's also in HACC, and you can actually look at that. Um, for information, I know parents call our offices a lot about demographic information. If things change, you don't want this person as an emergency contact, you will have to call the main guidance secretary, and she will send the forms for you to update that on HACC. All of our counselor and teacher emails are hyperlinked. And for those of you who are new to our school, I love our district and the fact that uh, if you know that teacher's name, it's their first name separated with a dot and then their last name at St. John's K-12. So once you look at your child's schedule, you can email the teachers automatically. You can just hyperlink, you can click on that link for the teacher and you can email them directly with any questions or concerns about that child's grades. Sometimes as counselors, we don't really know just like you. We are not in the classrooms. So parents will call our office and they want to know a particular information about why is there three zeros and my child was in school. Just email that teacher directly and they will be able to explain why there are three zeros. So on Hack and Schoology, Home Access Center, there's a difference with the Schoology. The teachers use Schoology a lot and that helps them as with the parent guide like Schoology, I know a lot of teachers love that and when we had the pandemic year last year, this was a great resource because if your child is absent, they don't have to rely on a friend or a classmate to get that information. That teacher posts everything on Schoology from every day. So you can, if that child is going to be absent, you can either look on Schoology and get that information or maybe the next day just check Schoology and then have your child complete the work. In Home Access Center, you can review quarter one grades. Um, if you need to email your teachers, there's a link right there that you can email all of your teachers for the Home Access Center. Thank you. So we're gonna get into graduation requirements now. Um, these are set by the state of Florida. Um, I think they're on the second page of your handout. But So this is a standard 24 credit diploma. Um, these are the major requirements, so assessments they have to pass are the Algebra 1 EOC and the 10th grade ELA FSA. Um, they have to pass those tests to graduate if they do not pass them um, or a concordant, they get what's called a certificate of completion um, and it's not a diploma. Um, they have to have at least a 2.0 unweighted GPA, so that is not counting the honors AP uh, dual enrollment classes into the GPA, that's going to be their weighted GPA. Um, their unweighted GPA, their standard classes, has to be above a 2.0. And they do have to take one full length online course. A lot of our students have taken HOPE online um, already, so usually by the time we get to 10th grade, we can check off that box um, that they've taken the online course. And if, um, uh, if they've passed it, and they have to have 24 specific credits. So these credits, they have to take four years of English, English one, two, three, and four. Um, they have to take four years of math, four math credits, but one has to be algebra and one has to be geometry. The other math credits can be 
user's choice. Um, we have liberal arts math, you know, pre-calculus, um, and other options. We have to have three credits of science. One has to be biology, and there is an end of course assessment with biology that's gonna count for 30% of that final grade. Um, and the history, so it's technically three years total, three credits total of history. Um, world history, we usually get them in sophomore year. <clears throat> US history, and then government is a half a credit they take senior year, and econ is also a half a credit that they take senior year. Um, they have to have one practical or performing fine arts, one hope class, so that's the health and PE class that they typically take freshman year, and then eight elective classes. In the state of Florida, it is not required for graduation to take two years of a foreign language. However, um, call, almost all colleges require two years of a foreign language. So we really push that just to keep that option open. Um, and it does have to be two years of, the, of a consecutive same language. So it can be like Spanish one, then Spanish two, or sign language one, sign language two, et cetera. Um, the colleges usually don't accept if it's like Spanish one, then sign language one. And the assessments. So like I said before, the Algebra 1 EOC is one of the tests that they have to pass. However, if they don't pass it, um, there are other options to get a concordance score to replace that score. So for example, they can either get a level three or above on the Algebra EOC, or a 16 or higher on the ACT math portion, or a 420 or higher on the SAT math portion, or a 430 or higher on the PSAT. We had some students get that um, with the PSAT testing last month already, that mm -hmm. was great. Um, in addition, they can pass the geometry EOC with a 499 or higher. So there's lots of ways to get the math concordance score. And with English, there are also a couple of ways. You can take the, the level three or above on the English FSA sophomore year, or they can do 18 or higher on the ACT, um, or 480 or higher on the SAT. So again, a couple different options if they don't pass the Algebra EOC or the FSA the first time. We have these other tests. And um, they can take them as many times as they want. Uh, GPA, so 2.0, that was the unweighted required GPA. 2.0 is a C average. Uh, and just make sure um, you can keep track of Hack. It's updated very frequently. And promotion requirement credits. So when we went into the ninth grade classrooms, of course they're coming from middle school, so they're just used to taking their classes and not earning a credit. So we sort of explained all of this to the ninth graders. They were looking like bright-eyed and ready to learn. So we explained to them that they're taking seven classes. And I said, I'm not telling you that Ms. Graham is saying you need to fail too, just to be promoted. But I don't know if as parents, the ninth graders did not know that there are promotional requirements and we are in charge of that as well. So when your ninth graders came in, some of them took high, middle, high school credits and middle school, so that's great. They came in maybe with Spanish or algebra, they've already earned two credits. So obviously by the end of ninth grade, they have a potential of earning having nine credits and they will be definitely promoted once they pass. So we explained to them that in ninth, going from ninth to 10th, they need five credits. But I, we encourage them to pass all seven classes. So <laughs> they're like, really, Ms. Graham, we need to have five? And I said, no, 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 I don't want you to go home and tell your parents that I only need to pass five. You know, they're gonna forget about the two. So. We explained that to them and we said, at least, you know, we're giving you an option. We have, because in Clay County, there's a six period day. In our county, we're number one in the state of Florida for a reason. We offer a seven period day. So they have a potential to be promoted to 10th grade with five credits. If your child is a 10th grader right now, do you see they only need 11 credits to be promoted? When they get to junior year, they need 17 credits to be promoted as senior status. And of course, they need the 24 credits. And I explained to the students, every year you take seven courses, so you are gonna have more than enough. If I have seniors here that take seven courses, so they potentially are gonna have like 28 credits when they graduate. So we set them up for a lot of success here. Um, if they come home and tell you that Ms. Graham said we only need to pass five, you know, now you know, it's, 
they do need to pass all seven, but five just to be promoted. And a lot of, I, I say the number one question we got with the freshmen was, how can I have a half day by senior year? Right. And we're like, just pass all your classes and you could possibly get a modified schedule or dual enrollment or something else. Right. So. They wanted to know. And so we explained to them by junior year, our principal allows one modified. And then by senior year, you wonder why the seniors only have three classes on their schedule because most of them just need English, math, American Gov and Econ, and American Gov and Econ are both half credit, so they only need three classes. So as you see, the, they are setting up their, themselves for a lot of success to have a modified, so we try to encourage them to work hard in ninth grade. So by, by junior year, they can start telling us that they want to do a modified, but there's a GPA requirement for the modified, they have to be on track as well. So we just don't let them modify and they have a 1.0 GPA, no. They have to have a, be on track. So high school grade calculations, I know it's confusing. We get a lot of calls into our office during report card time. The first report card is coming out on January 19th. Do not be alarmed when you don't see a grade for Algebra 1 or Biology or Geometry because they are year-long classes with an EOC. So we get a multitude of calls every day like, Ms. Graham, the report card is wrong. There's no grade for math or no grade for science. Remember, Algebra 1, Geometry, Biology, and U.S. History, which is taken in junior year, they all have an end of course exam tied to a 30%. So that grade will not show up on the report card until late summer. Okay, so that's the reason. So with the EOC courses, it's broken down, and we have this in the PowerPoint for you. Quarter 1 is only 17.5%. Quarter two is the same. Then they have a district common midterm exam that's coming out in December. They will have like a half day. They just take like um, two exams per day and then the buses leave early. Um, they'll only, that's only worth 10% of their grade. Then we have quarter three, the same thing, 17.5%, quarter four. And then around May, they take the end of course exam and that's 30% of their grade and that's cumulative. So from what they've been learning from August until the end of the school year. So the teachers, they sort of give them packets because sometimes students say, well, Ms. Graham, I can't remember what I learned back in August. So the teachers prepare them really well for this EOC test. For the rest, all other courses, such as your English or your elective classes, you will see the grades. So they will earn their first half credit if they're a ninth grader and haven't taken any high school classes in middle school you will now see their half credit earned on January 19th on the report card. So quarter one is worth 45%, quarter two is 45%, everything is worth 45%. The district exam is only 10% of the grade. Any questions about that? So the GPAs update every semester. So as I said, on January 19th, you're going to probably see their first GPA. Um, we talked to the ninth graders about what is a GPA and an honors GPA compared to a standard, and you probably all know this. If they're all in standard classes and they're making an A, it's 4.0, compared to if they're making an, taking an honors class, it'll be 4.5 weighted on the GPA. So on your report card, you will see the unweighted GPA and the weighted GPA even in half. If they are taking an AP course, like our ninth graders take an AP Human Geography, that's weighted 5.0 on the weighted scale. Dual enrollment is the same thing for juniors. So, your honors and AD, dual enrollment in AP, and only unweighted GPA counts towards graduation and qualifications for dual enrollment. I want to point out here, we're in the state of Florida, Bright Futures have a different way of calculating the GPA we have all of that information on our guidance website. A lot of parents say, well, you know, my child has a 4.0 GPA already, but their Bright Futures is not 4.0. Bright Futures only take a certain core subject uh, compared to what our school, our school in the state of Florida take. We take all of the electives, all of the online classes. We, it's a cumulative of that. But Bright Futures take just a, a small amount of those grades. 
great forgiveness. If your student earns a D or an F in a course, they are able to make up that grade, basically, um, if the class is offered on one of these platforms. They can take it on St. John's Virtual, Florida Virtual, FLBS, or Apex Credit Recovery. Recently, the district um, started doing quarter one credit recovery in certain subjects. So if a student got a D or an F in quarter one, now for those certain classes, now they're able to do Apex recovery for that quarter um, up to a C. But if they completely retake the course, like in summer school or on one of these platforms, then that'll completely go over that original grade for the whole grade. And all grade forgiveness should be done by senior year, so it can be calculated into their GPA, so their GPA can be fixed by then. One, one point I want to mention to the parents, because they think we wipe out the D or the F on the, if your child earned the D or an F, we do not wipe that grade out. We just zero that grade, so the colleges will see that the first time they took, let's say, Algebra 1 honors, they made an F. Then they retook it on Florida Virtual, and now they have an A. So now that F will be zeroed out, so the colleges will see that they did fail, and then they will see the new higher grade recalculated. So do not have the item just because they take the grade recovery that we are erasing. The, the registrar's office is not deleting the F or the D. So they will see how many Ds the student has made and how they have struggled, and then it'll be a great thing for them to see the A, the higher grade, A, B, or C. Also, um, if the student retakes a course in APEX, it doesn't count towards the NCAA eligibility. They will take the original grade for the sports. And official transcripts, we cannot give them a copy of their official transcript. They have to order it from the parchment. And I think I put the, the link on here, but you can also find it on our guidance website. Um, they have to order it through there and they get two free a year, I believe. Two free. The PTO helps to pay for that. So they get yeah, two. they get two free copies a year um, to send out and then they have to pay um, for the rest of them, but they do have to order it online. We have unofficial transcripts. So if they need an unofficial transcript for something, we can give that to them. And community service. So this is not for graduation. They don't have to have this for graduation, but we push the Bright Future Scholarship to all of our students. It is required for Bright Future Scholarships. Uh, they require 100 hours minimum. And um, there's been some recent changes with the Bright Future Scholarship as of this year about certain activities that can count and certain activities that cannot count towards the um, the service hours. Also, they are making they're having students um, turn in their hours two ways now. They have to fill out a form like they've always done. If you've had a student that's gone here for a couple years, they have to turn in the form to Miss Richards like they've done, um, just saying like where they went and what they did, the reflection log. But now the state of Florida has said we are required to have a letter on the official letterhead just a blurb from that company saying that the student was in fact there doing service hours. So that is just the one of the additional things that they require now. Um, mm -hmm. So they still have to turn the form to Miss Richards in the main guidance office. And now they have to get a letter with the letterhead from the company. Um, also a couple things that have changed with activities that count versus activities that don't count towards these hours. They used to count donating canned goods, um, like we would do canned food drives here all the time and um, kids could come bring canned goods for service hours, but they are not allowing that anymore. Um, so just, there's a, a list of things that can count um, on our website that we put and a couple things that don't count. That was the main one. I, right. I don't, then they, if you, if you own a business, your child cannot work and right. help you and you say you're going to give them their 50 hours on a Saturday. You, yeah. they, it cannot be like a relative <laughs> writing up their um, nonprofit kind yeah. of some unity service hours. So it has to be a nonprofit. And some of those examples are like the animal shelter. Right now, Why the the hospitals really don't encourage because of the pandemic. They don't want students there. But what, what did we say? The um, animal shelters, um, the homeless shelters, the retirement homes, yeah. they always need people to volunteer. They're, even the schools, you forget about the elementary and middle and high schools. In the summer, 
We need a lot of help with answering the phones in the summer. We have a textbook coordinator, all the new adopted textbooks that come in. We have like this, probably this cafeteria is filled with boxes. So we need them to barcode. So we will have a contact information of who you can call to sign your child if they're at home and they're not working and they want to start their volunteer hours. We have encouraged the ninth graders. We said you need to have at least start your 25 hours now in ninth grade. Because remember, by senior year, you're filling out applications for college. You are um, doing busy. scholarships. Yeah. You know, job. it's a lot of stress in senior year. Yeah, and um, also we we encourage them to keep copies of their service hours, even though they're turning them in. Just because you never know, you know. So just keep copies of those too. And. So I am the ACT and SAT testing coordinator here at Bartram Trail High School. So did, I know Ms. Fabro talked about uh, the different ways that they do not meet the testing requirements at the beginning. ACT and SAT are college admissions tests. Um, for dual enrollment, if your children are thinking about signing up for dual enrollment, they need a college placement test score, so they will need an ACT or an SAT. It is recommended that they take this the spring of their junior year. However, we are seeing more and more kids starting to take higher level classes early. So if your child has really started Algebra 2 and Chemistry by ninth or 10th grade, I would encourage them to take, they don't have to wait until their junior year. They can take it now and just see, the, see what scores they have. They don't have to send them off to colleges yet, but just to get them um, ready. They can even take prep classes and Khan Academy is a free website. There's Huntington, Sylvan, there's different places. They can buy a test prep book from Books A Million, Barnes and Noble. So a good thing for ninth and 10th graders right now is to sign up for prep classes because you want to do the best. It's more test taking strategies because that test is timed. So there are a lot of questions in a small amount of time. Also, if your student, if you have a ninth or 10th grade student and they would like to do dual enrollment their junior year, they do have to take one of these tests by, we say January, sophomore year, because um, you're going to be applying to dual enrollment, um, you know, by March of sophomore year and you have to have the test scores back to you in order to apply and get verified. And it can be the ACT, SAT, or the PERT test is another one offered by St. John's River State College. And we are almost out of time, but yeah, okay. <laughs> and the per test is offered, as she said, by the, we used to offer it here, but right now they will have to sign up with the testing office at St. John's River State College. It's twenty-five dollars they're charging now, but the students can instantly see their scores because it's online. So if your child right now is in tenth grade and considering dual enrollment, that will be the quickest option to get those test scores in because have, we have to make a determination. The teachers are going to start recommending by next month. In January, we will be now scheduling for the next year, junior classes or sophomore classes. And then the juniors and seniors, rising juniors. So if they are interested in taking a dual enrollment class, they need one college admissions test score in there with along with their 3.0 unweighted GPA. Mm -hmm. And we have the testing schedule posted on our website as well. Um, we are pretty much out of time. Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, if you have your questions written down, please stick them in the basket and we'll post a Q&A on our website and feel free to scan our Instagram QR code on the way out the door.